We are making a game, a turn-based game, and during development, this question popped up almost immediately. How do we handle turns? Which sounds like a question with a pretty straightforward answer, but it isn't. And let me tell you why. Just in case you're not familiar with this type of games, in a turn-based game, teams will take turns in order to do stuff. When it's my turn, I can decide what actions can I take and the opponent must wait until it's their turn. Which actions can I take, when does my turn start and when does it end, are all questions where the answer depends on the game. Our development cycle has started very recently, so there are a lot of variables to take in consideration. For now, let's look at examples of how other games approach this issue. Fire Emblem lets you start and act with all your units before the turn ends. The same will happen in the enemy turn, so leaving units out in the open can be very punishing. In Valkyria Chronicles, the game gives you order tokens each turn. These tokens can be used to act with your units, give special orders that provide buffs, or save them for later to have more juicy turns. When you spend all the tokens or decide to pass, your turn ends. Now let's see more complex examples. One of them is Final Fantasy Tactics, where a unit can act when its charge time, also known as CT, reaches 100. This means that some units may play before or after enemy units. You can get a lot of value during gameplay by using abilities that affect the CT of a unit so their turns are delayed or sped up. And as a quick note, the amount of CT a unit gains during turns will depend on their speed attribute. The last example that we will see for now is Divinity Original Sin. Here an attribute called Initiative is used to determine which unit should play first, and then assign that turn to that player. Starting from there, the units will be placed on a turn tracker depending on that attribute, while following a round robin type of rule. What I mean by this is that the turn will always alternate between the player and the enemy, regardless of the initiative value. There were a lot of good ideas that these and more games brought to the table, but it's really important to understand that each game has their own needs, so simply choosing one and calling it a day wouldn't do justice to our game. We felt that making the player wait for all the units in the opposing team made the action stop in our action turn-based strategy game, so an approach like Fire Emblem wouldn't work for us. Oh right, by the way, we are creating an action turn-based strategy game. More on that on a later video. After playtesting a bit, the combat felt more interesting to us when the units were mixed in the turn tracker like in Divinity Original Sin, so we decided to use that. Our minds were made, but I personally didn't like the fact that an attribute was the determining factor on who goes first. Even if that attribute could be modified by leveling up, changing classes or equipping gear, it didn't sit well with me that the player needed to focus on that just for getting a head start. So this is what we did. First, you need to take in consideration that one of the pillars in our game design is that we want every action in our game to matter. Units can take action whenever it's their turn by using their own action points. Those action points can be used for movement, attacks, skills or items. This means that a unit that has done a lot of stuff should have little or none action points at the end of their turn. So we decided for the turns to be based on those action points. The greater the amount of points your unit has, the sooner the turn will be given to that unit. Depending on the number of default points a unit will have, it will be common that there are ties, and in this case, we will always give the preference to the player. After deciding that, the turns will alternate between the player and the enemy, but only if the units have the same action points. In the case where two or more units of the same team are tied, we didn't want to rely on an attribute like speed or initiative. So in this case, we will give the choice to the player to pick the unit they want, and from there we will reorganize the turn tracker. It's very tempting to say that this is how the turns will be handled in our game, but game development is an iterative process. Our goal is to make a fun game, and if mechanics need to be changed to achieve it, so be it. Eventually, we will get it right, but for now, this is what we came up with and we will see what happens. 
To close the video, I must mention that it may be possible to arrive at the same idea of a game that has been released before. If this is the case, do let us know, so we can check it out. It would be awesome to try it because right now our game has very limited gameplay. Also, keep in mind that this game is not finished so any type of feedback is welcome. I'm Ram, the programmer at UNF Games, and if you want to learn how to create your own game, check out our action game course and start your first lesson for free. See you in the next devlog.